So in today's video, I wanted to go through a very important part of modern music production, and that is side chain compression. A lot of people have asked in the comments about my sidechain compression plugin that I use LFO tool. I was also talking to one of my students in a lesson about sidechain compression and thought it might be a good idea to show off the many different ways you can do sidechain compression. Now sidechain compression is mainly used to separate two instruments within our song. It's mainly used on kicks and basses and it's used a lot in electronic genres to help create this pumping effect too. And it simply does this by reducing the volume of our bass track when the kick drum plays. And then when the kick drum stops playing, the volume of the bass is brought back up to whatever it was before. And this means that only one of our kick or bass is basically playing at any given time. And to do this in its most basic way, we need a kick drum and a bass track. I'm going to load a compressor onto my bass track and in Ableton and Logic it's very important to make sure your compressor is in peak mode and in Ableton I'm just using this third view option on the left. We then go up to the top left hand corner of our compressor, turn on the side chain option and then select our drum rack and kick drum. So you want to place the compressor on the track that you want to duck out of the way and usually place this on a melodic track like a bass or chords or vocal and the side chain trigger that you're going to use would be some kind of drum sound normally the kick drum and once we've got this setup it's pretty much done i've just got this four bar loop here with four different layers let's just have a listen to what it sounds like before A little bit muddy, the kick and the bass kind of get in each other's way, and it just sounds like layers at the moment. So back to the bass track, let's now just bring down this threshold. And hopefully you can really hear that bass sound ducking out of the way whenever the kick drum is playing and then popping back up when it's finished. The more you bring this threshold down, the more gain reduction or ducking there will be. And you can use the meter on the right to just check that it's actually doing something. And it's very important to play around with the release time. So it's set to 30 milliseconds right now. A lot of the time, if you bring the release down to something too fast, like one or five milliseconds, you'll probably get that kind of distortion that you could just hear then. So we're probably gonna set this to something like 20 or 30 milliseconds at a minimum. And the other problem you can get with the release, as we start to bring this up, the ducking effect will last longer. Emphasizing the ducking even more, but you need to make sure that this gain reduction meter returns back to zero before the next kick drum starts to duck. This seems okay. This isn't. You can see it a little bit clearer on this graph. This flat line that we're at right now is no gain reduction. And you see that the line just makes it below but then it goes back down because the next kick comes in. If we bring this down, you want something like this. Where that gain reduction is just getting back to the zero line and then the next kick drum can start. If you don't do this, you're gonna end up with this problem where your bass will sound really quiet when the kick drum is playing like this. And as soon as the kick drum stops playing, it's gonna get really loud in different sections of the song. And that's the basic way of using side chain compression. It's a good way of doing it because it's quite clean. You are ducking exactly when the bass needs to be ducked because we're using the kick drum as that input signal. Now I might also wanna apply this to my chord pattern above. I'm gonna copy this compressor to the chords by holding down Alt or Option, clicking and dragging it onto the chord track. And that's all we have to do. It's now set up in exactly the same way. Again, let's just bring this release down. Straight away, you can just hear how much more character, how much more glued together those elements feel. You don't have to do as much as I'm doing right here. We could bring the threshold back up on the chords.
But this can be one of the problems of doing sidechain compression like this. Sometimes you can't find that perfect balance between it sounding too heavy or you bring the threshold up and you don't get as much sidechain compression, but it sounds a lot more natural. So that's why we're going to look at some different ways to do this. Now, the first way to change up this process is by adding in another track. Load in a drum rack. I'm going to just bring in something very short like a hi-hat like this. I'm going to program the hi-hat out so it's exactly the same as my kick drum. And I'm going to make this hi-hat sample even shorter just by bringing this end marker in. Very short, sharp click. And that's okay because we're not actually going to hear this by turning off the output setting it to the sends only mode, which is a little bit different than if we just deactivated the track. I'm going to rename this to be sidechain trigger. Now all we have to do is go into our bass compressor, change the trigger over to sidechain trigger, and we should get a very similar effect. But you might be able to hear that the pumping effect isn't as strong. So in order to actually see what's happening with our sidechain compression, I'm going to bring in a plugin, a third party plugin. It's called Ocular Scope. And I'm going to put this onto my main output, my master channel. And this is just a waveform analyzer. It's synced to the tempo of your project. It's also free as well. And the link's down in the description below. And when we watch our track through this, We'll be able to see, for example, our kick drum on the left here and our bass. But when we combine the two, you see this big mess starts to happen at the beginning. The shape of the kick drum's kind of disappeared and it changes every single time a kick drum hits. And it's just down to how the bass and the kick are interacting with each other. But when we apply our side chain, you can see you get a much clearer picture. There's the kick drum at the beginning, and then as the kick drum is finishing, the bass starts to fade in on the right. And another big benefit of this is if you look at the height of our kick drum at the beginning, you'll see that the kick and the bass are roughly the same height. The kick's a little bit louder overall. And when we turn this off, this section at the beginning becomes a lot louder in comparison to our bass. So it's overall going to increase the volume by just combining those two without side chaining them together. You're going to get big spikes in your waveform, which is going to make your track sound a lot quieter or start to distort a lot faster when you get into the mastering stage. And this can also highlight one of the problems with just using side chain compression in this regular way. See, our kick drum looks very nice at the beginning, but when it fades out, we get this dip just before the bass starts to really come in. And as you can hear, it creates this slight gap in between our kick and our bass. And if we try to bring the release down, we can fix this. But eventually we'll get to that point where we'll start to add distortion in before we can completely fill that gap. And we could bring the threshold back up a little bit, of course, too. What you'll tend to find is it's quite hard to find that sweet spot in between the two. And this brings us all the way back around to our trigger track. Bring back up our sidechain compressor that's assigned to our hi-hat trigger. Now I can bring this threshold all the way down. I have my release still at 20, 30 milliseconds. We can get a really fast and responsive game reduction on our track here. And again, that's just because it's not listening to our kick drum anymore. It's listening to that very short hi-hat above. So now I can bring my release up. And we are going to get some crossover into the tail of the kick drum. As you can see, it's starting to like morph. But we have a little bit more control now over the length and that crossover point between the two. And let's just compare between the two now by jumping back and forth. So this left one here is the trigger. The right one is our kick. Now 
They both sound very, very similar, but the one thing I pick up on with our trigger there, you hear less of that pumping effect, definitely less of a dip in between the kick and the bass. And one of the other benefits to this, as I was saying before, we might want to apply this side chain compression to our cuts. But the problem you might find with the original technique, when the kick drum isn't playing, you'll just get your blank chords. But now with our side chain trigger, we can just continue that on past the end of the kick drum here. And we'll get that nice pumping side chain effect, but without our kick drum above. And the reason why this is better than using a kick drum is because if you think of the shape of a kick drum, we bring our threshold down to just below the peak of the kick drum, we're gonna get a very short burst of gain reduction. But the amount of gain reduction isn't going to be a lot because the volume of our kick is only going above the threshold by a very small amount. So we start to bring the threshold down, we increase the gain reduction, but we also increase the length that the gain reduction is happening at the same time. Even if we change our attack and release times, it wouldn't have a massive effect on the gain reduction because it's still being controlled by our kick drum signal. So by making this short trigger, we now have much more control over the length compared to that original kick, and we can still get very strong amounts of gain reduction. But one of the issues with this is you do need to make sure you set your length correctly, and especially with our bass sound here. You wanna make sure that there's not too much crossover or movement happening in between the kick and the bass. So, so a release time like this is way too short. We've got a lot of phase cancellation movement and increase in volume at the tail of the kick when the bass is coming in a little bit too early. And then a release time of like this is too long again because we're getting that dip. So something like this is a nice balance between the two and it's gonna be completely different depending on the kick and the bass that you're using. So let's talk about some of the more advanced ways of creating sidechain compression. And some of these are gonna be using third party plugins. There are loads of plugins like this out there, but the ones I'm gonna be talking about today are LFO Tool and Kickstart 2. And these plugins do work in a very similar way where they will reduce the volume of our bass sound when our kick drum plays, but they do it in a slightly different way. I'm gonna load LFO tool here onto my base. And this view that we can see here is just a volume envelope. This is the volume of our base. You can see it's playing over at a rate of a quarter note there, so every beat. And if we bring these points down, we can create this big dip at the beginning of our bass sound when our kick drum plays. And these are different, of course, because it's just a shape that is controlling the volume rather than the kick drum. This is kind of just in this cycling mode where it's going to just loop over and over again, even without a kick drum or a side chain being enabled. And this can be great for most dance music that just has a kick drum on every single beat. But I would always recommend to set this up in the MIDI mode where we'll send MIDI information to LFO Tool to trigger that shape. And to do this in LFO Tool, I'm gonna just turn on Note Retrigger and I'm also gonna click it again to set this to envelope mode. So it's just gonna cycle through the shape once. And now we need to send MIDI information to this LFO Tool. I'm gonna go back onto my kick drum. And on the simpler within the cell, I'm going to group this to itself. Open up the chains view. I'm going to create a new chain underneath my main kick. And on that chain, I'm going to go into instruments and load in an external instrument. I'm going to go into this MIDI 2, select the bass. And when I've done this, you'll see straight away in the option below, it already pops up saying LFO tool one. And just to show you if I put in a double kick drum at the end here, maybe at some other point. 
it's triggering that side chain twice instead of just on every beat. So it means it has worked. And to properly set this up now, we need to just get this shape right. So I'm going to bring up my waveform here on the left. What I like to do in LFO tool, I'm going to make this really long, something like this. So there's a very noticeable gap between the two. I'm going to slowly bring this across. until the bass just starts to play near the end of the kick drum there. Just like that, you can see there's not any cancellation going on before, just at this end point. And once I've found that end point, I can then either get rid of this point here or I could keep it in and just use the curve to shape my transition between fully side-chained and no side chain. You can see at the moment, this is a bit of a mess, but as we bring this down, and you can see we're getting a much more precise side chain movement where the kick is just ending and then the bass is coming in here. You don't get that noticeable dip between the two. It's much more tighter precise side chain effect. I can control the amount of side chain using this lower point here. The one thing you might be able to hear though is this. This pop at the beginning here, this click. And the way to really change that inside of here is to bring this smooth up to a very low amount. just get rid of that extremely snappy part of the click. You'll still hear there's a bit of a pop in there, but that is just inevitable with a moving bass line that we've got. Now let's just have a listen to the difference between this and between our regular sidechain trigger compression. Sidechain trigger on the left, LFO tool on the right. You can hear it's so much more closer to the kick before. And of course, if you wanted a little bit of extra emphasis, we could always bring this second point back here a bit more. The only problem with this is if I copy it now over to my chords, I'm just gonna need to go back into my kick drum, duplicate this external instrument rack, and then just change the MIDI to the chords. So I've got one that's the bass and one which is the chords. And again, Kickstart 2 pretty much works in the same way. I've not actually used it that much myself, but there is a MIDI option in there in which you can trigger certain sidechain shapes too. Only thing to be careful of is you just need to make sure you find that perfect crossover point between the kick and the bass because you can just set it to be whatever it wants. You could run into phase issues too. And just like with the sidechain compression from before, if you did want to have the sidechain without the kick drum, then you just set up another sidechain trigger track above. And on that track, you'd load in the external instrument, group it to itself, and then just do as we did before, keep adding extra chains underneath, depending on how many different instruments you've got. What you could also do to make that process a bit easier is you could group the chords and the bass together and then place the side chain compression on the whole group. But you may run into latency issues like limiters, distortions and compressors, third party ones in particular might introduce some latency, which you can check in Ableton by just hovering over the name of the plugin. You can see the Pro L2 here has a latency of 66 milliseconds, which is a lot. If you had this on your bass track before going into the group, the sidechain goes all weird and starts to go out of time. So that's why I just recommend to put it on the individual tracks like this. But if you've got Ableton, you don't actually need to use LFO tool or Kickstart. There is another way that you can do this and it's using a MIDI effect called Shaper MIDI. I'm gonna load this onto the kick drum cell. I'm gonna go back onto my bass and I'm just gonna load in a utility plugin. Once I've done this, I go back to my drum rack 
hit the map button at the top. While it's flashing, I'm going to go back to the base and click on the utilities gain. And you'll see it as mapped if it does something like this. I'm going to go back to the shaper MIDI. I'm going to change this to remote and set the top value there on the right to 50%. Very important that you do that before you press play. And this is very similar to what we just set up inside of LFO tool, where the shaper MIDI will be triggered by the MIDI that's coming into our kick drum sample here. And it will trigger this envelope to control the gain of our bass. So if we bring this point at the end up, bring this second point across, and I'm gonna turn snap off for this too. We'll start to get side chain compression. However, the only problem I've found using this is there is a big pop at the beginning of our sound. You can see at the beginning, we're getting a lot of movement, a big increase in volume, and that's because the bass isn't ducking as fast as the other methods. And that's overlapping with the kick and skewing it completely. And I've tried turning off the delay compensation to fix this because that's always something to do with that, but there just seems to be some kind of delay within that side chain process. I tried this out in a fresh project too. It could just be my Ableton that is causing this. Now, there is one final way I want to talk about, which isn't talked about quite a lot. It's using automation. I could automate the volume of my bass track here, but I'm going to use a utility again. I'm going to turn LFO tool off. I'm going to right click on the gain and go show automation. I'm just going to make this track a little bit bigger. And it's as simple as drawing in a ducking shape. So let's put my end point here. I'm going to put another point at the beginning of the next kick and then just create some kind of shape like this hold down option or alt to make a curve and i'm just going to loop this first beat here and look on my oscilloscope just to check again i'm just aiming for about there we can create a really perfect shape we can control the amount And then we can just select that whole area and copy it out like so. And then select this whole area. And the good thing about automation is there isn't going to be really any issues with latency. And we can change the amount fairly easily if we select a certain area like this or even the whole track. If you go to the middle, bottom middle of the area that you've got selected, you should see there's a very small square. I'm going to hold down the option key and this will stretch the top and the bottom in together. And now we can change the amount of side chain as you can see there. But as you can probably guess, the only problem with doing this is if you did want to change the length or the shape of that slope, you'd have to change one and then duplicate everything out again. The same goes for if you then wanted to change it on multiple different tracks. It just takes a lot of time using this method, but it is the most accurate out of the three that we have looked at. And one bonus way of side chaining something, if I want that pumping effect, I like to come in to use auto pan, just drag this on the base, I'm going to bring the amount up to full, set the phase to zero, set the rate to synced, and we want this to be a quarter note. And then I'm going to change the shape to a saw and hit the normal button in the bottom left. So it's now inverted. And if I bring the shape up, we get that side chain pumping effect. 
again, not very customizable, but I do like to use it if I just want to add a pump in effect to a sound without having to delve into all that sidechain stuff. And most of this stuff works exactly the same inside of Logic and other DAWs too. The process of sending MIDI to LFO Tool or Kickstart will be slightly different. When I come to writing any songs or using this in any of my productions, I tend to end up going for that LFO Tool method. There are some slight downfalls of using it, but it is the most precise. And as long as you know what you're doing and what to look for, you can get really fast, aggressive sidechain compression. Let me know in the comments what your favorite method is, or if there are any other methods that you use. Make sure to like the video if you found something useful and hit the subscribe button too. It does help out the channel massively. We're nearly at 2000 subscribers now. So thank you for all the support on the channel. I do also offer online one-to-one -one tuition in any topic, any skill level, doesn't matter what point you're at in the production process or if you're brand new to music production and want to learn the basics too. If you are interested, you can get in touch on the website, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, WhatsApp. But thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.